I'm just, I'm just hooked on looking at this crazy ass fullness, this pump from four sets, two sets of chest guys, two sets of chest, two sets of shoulders. Yeah, guys doing 20 set workouts to get a pump, you know, and like, oh yeah, look at this pump, bro. Not even 20 reps total, you know, for the shoulders, not even. All right, folks, it is Wednesday, the 24th of the month of July. Is that right? Yeah, July. And uh, here at the Muscle to train chest and shoulders. You guys didn't catch my first chest and shoulder session since after the show. I had came in one night. I just wanted to get it done. Didn't feel like filming. Wanted to get back home. So I'll privy you guys to what... Um, Things are gonna look like moving forward. As you know, the way we approach improvements is prioritization, specificity, and that's what we're gonna be doing. So since I've reduced my arm volume um, in my back and arm today, in regard, especially my triceps, um, I'm gonna be adding in an extra press today for shoulders. So I'm gonna start off with shoulder press. I want my shoulders to improve. My arms have caught up now I don't have as much of the boulder shoulder pumpkin uh, cannonball bullying that I used to have because now my arms are caught up. So proportion wise, you know, I, I want my shoulders to get bigger. So they have that imposing look to them. <clears throat> so how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to hit them as hard as I can when I have the most effort to give, which is going to be at the beginning of the workout. So we're going to move back to a very high incline Smith Machine Press, super stable, um, was a staple of mine. I felt like my shoulders were probably their best looking ever in 23. So I'm gonna return to that. Then we're gonna follow it up with the good old lateral raise, can't beat it. Move into chest, meat and potato stuff, a press, a fly. And if I don't die, then I succeeded, right? So simple as that, just, uh, Train with intensity, Hanneman size principle. We're gonna be doing an episode on Physique Friday about that one, but that's the only piece of scientific literature you need, guys. Go to failure, recruit all the motor units possible. Simple as put, simple as, simply, simply put. And don't mind my eyes. I think I fell asleep with my contacts in one night this week after cutting grass and they are all ugly and red. Yeah, they're disgusting, but anyhow, I'm gonna go warm up and I'll catch you guys on the press. All right, guys, here's the press. Um, kind of nervous about how this is gonna go. The warm up set felt kind of heavy. Uh, I broke my own rule today and I did some intense work before I came to the gym. And the end result of that was spilling my seed and not getting anybody pregnant. So, uh, definitely decreases performance so if i underperform in the gym it's because i overperformed on the couch oh, behave. and uh, i've actually seen this happen so yeah. if i didn't do as well today i would write that off and know why it was so maybe you guys can take note of that for yourselves you know in your own uh, walk here we go uh two plates in a 25 each side high incline i'm fucking scared bro this is gonna be heavy Ooh. Oh, always twist it the wrong way. I hate this fucking Cybex Smith machine. The base on this fucker is not wide enough, so you always have to set the bench up in it the wrong way. God damn it. Break this thing down. It's fucking stupid. I just wasted so much juice getting ready for an unrack, and it didn't even fucking happen. Fuck! Uh, six reps. I think I got five last time I was here, so that's pretty good. I wanted seven. I had seven in my head, but it just kept involuntarily slowing down against my will, no matter how hard I pushed. <sighs> Which means that all of the muscle fibers were recruited 
So at first, it was the slow twitch. And then as more and more were needed and recruited by the body, <laughs> the, all of the fast twitch fibers were used. And then there were no more fibers to recruit. And the fucking weight stopped moving. And that means I stimulated the maximum amount of growth possible with one set. All right, lateral raise, isolateral, one arm at a time. Found this cool nifty handle. It is a RMW handle. Let's check this out. A little taper to it. Fits really good in the hand. And I always like that the weight is kind of, obviously you can set it up to either side, but I like the feel of that weight pulling down on the thumb area. We're gonna go heavy. We got, uh, it's 12 kilos on this stack, but shit, that feels heavy. So I'm gonna start off with the cable in between my legs. That way I've got tension on the shoulder from the bottom. Let's go. It's always my grip on this left hand. the grip of this hand. I got to do something about that. I need to start trading the grip on that left hand. This right hand is literally meteor. I came to that conclusion last time I was training arms, holding on to the ball attachment. And that grip just wants to fade. It just feels awkward trying to hold on to stuff. But I'm right-handed, you know, and my wife said it's from always playing with my pecker. You should see the size of her hands. <laughs> All, right. All right. Can't really stabilize myself now, I can. <laughs> oh, come on, you guys want to see it, don't you? So I actually did it properly this time and started off with uh, my left side, left shoulder, just ain't as good as the right. But again, then again, why would I expect these sides to be equal when I'm lacking foundationally in the basis of all upper body movements, which is my hands and my grip. Obviously on some things we can get more stable, you know, and kind of eliminate that grip, but talking about over a decade of training and a lot of it, I was using slag uh, it just makes a difference, you know. Okay, shoulders, pretty well covered. A lateral isolation, a good press. Rear delts are covered on back day. You know, don't really feel the need to uh, isolate those today. So I'm gonna move right into chest. All right guys, get ready to do the uh, isolateral seated fly. Tried a couple different handles. One of the things that I find was an issue with different ones is the length of the handle when you're holding the when you're holding it itself the uh, makeup for the attachment will either bind up on the forearm or the wrist or it's just too long and that affects the the load through the range of motion so i think this standard handle as opposed to the fixed metal one for the binding issue i think this is what we're going to go with and i just wanted to say that um I think Acroasis by Obscura is probably one of the most um, emotional songs that you could put on in a set. 
It's just hitting so hard right now. So let's feel it. Oh, I might have to restart it, man. I don't want it to end. Oh. Oh. Coming past center. Monolithic. That was a good set. Woo. We used it all right there, baby. All right, let's move the handles. fighting demons none of that silly shit i'm not uh overcoming some previous trauma or tapping into some dark fantasy to get through a set no this is just what's required to grow this is a normal day in the office Whew. or as often as we train you know like this is the weekend <laughs> but you've seen my physique i've been doing the same shit for three years now, this is it. This is what's required. This is all that's needed. Anything more, and I risk ruining it all. It would all be for naught if I push too far. Moderation in all things, gentlemen. <sighs> Except for intensity. Exercise selection, super important. There's a reason for everything that I do. Uh, sometimes it's because I'm retarded, but today that's not the case. Um, I started off with the high incline press for the shoulders. It also incorporated the upper chest and that clavicle area. I know because I felt it. All right, I did the standard fly at shoulder height, and that's to activate through the center of the chest. We're following the fibers. We've talked about this before, so. Here with this press, you'll notice the movement arm here. It's gonna start here and I'm gonna be pushing up and through and that's gonna cover the underneath of the chest. So I will have trained my shoulders in their entirety apart from the rear delts, which were just are stabilizing today. But I get plenty of that on my back days with my rowing. So it's not a concern. If you've seen my back double biceps, my shoulders ain't a problem, okay? 
may be for you. And it's probably because you're doing too damn much uh, rear delt work, to be honest. And you're just not working hard enough. Nobody likes to hear that, I don't think, that you just need to work harder. Like, you could do less if you would work harder. And if you worked harder, you'd have to do less. And, yeah, whatever. I'm going to stop shit-talking you, you bums out there watching the show. Seething from the last video and come watch my workout, my four-set workout. But, alas, I digress. I choose this press because I'm going to be working from the bottom. So I started at the top, hit the mid, working from the underneath. Okay. Also, the additional tricep volume, getting a little bit of that in there too. Um, since I'm only doing one set on my arm days, it all makes sense to me. So let's pick a weight, put it into practice, baby. What we got on here? We got 110. I'm just going to go ahead and put 215 on here and probably not be able to lift it. Let's do it. Let's just max out the machine from the fucking jump. That's a wrap, baby. <laughs> Something about these old Nautilus machines, man. The, um, the load through the course of the range of motion is incredible on here. Unlike a lot of machines, this one isn't stupid heavy in the back. It's almost like it ramps up heavier the closer you get. Well, no. The real weight starts to apply as soon as you break out, it would begin to press. Whereas opposed to you getting pinned in this really deep position uh, and not being able to start off a proper rep. That's a problem with a lot of machines is that you get stuck in the back. If you've noticed a lot of like guys who are using hammer strength machines, they always have to put additional plates in between the bumpers so they have a further out starting point so they can actually start the fucking the rep. And if I'm not mistaken, I actually hate hammer strength machines, and I believe the reason is, um, is because they get lighter the further you get away. They're heaviest back here, and lightest as you're completing the rep and, and reaching peak contraction, which is the exact opposite of what they should be. So, hammer strength press machines, poo poo. Hammer strength back equipment, the poo poo. Right? That's the difference. You can either be shit or be the shit. And uh, that's the difference. So, you wanna see what the physique looks like? I'm kinda of curious too. I thought I was uh, withering away and getting fat at the same time. But that's anybody who um, looks as sick as I did last month or earlier this month and destroyed my fellow competitors. I respect all of you, I'm sorry. But I fucking owned you guys. <laughs> I owned them, you know it, you were there, you saw it. You saw it. They got mogged. I can't say that. I can't say that. Yeah. So yeah, when you go from being on top of the world like that to uh, kind of getting back to normal, you know, it don't last forever, and it's not supposed to. But let's see uh, what we held on to. Chest is looking stout.
Ah, <laughs> oh, I did something. Tweaked up my hips and my, uh, yeah, something with my lower back hips. Either all the muscles got really, really tight and put everything in a bind, but even just bracing to pose is sending shooting pains down my glutes, through my IT bands, down into my calves, like especially bracing my core. This has happened to me a few different times and it's always when getting back into a heavy um, hinging type movement. It just seems to stir the pot, but uh, I'm gonna get through it because I definitely wanna keep those sumo RDLs in on leg day. Are you? First time. Oh, the first time was on my honeymoon. Yeah. And hey, there may be so a yeah, point. <laughs> Open and shut. All right. One more, one more big flex. And we are going home. Yeah, I wish the lighting was a little bit better. Uh, it looks, looks huge. Looking huge. Did you do shoulders? Did I do shoulders? Yeah. Did I look like I did shoulders? Yeah. Yeah, I did shoulders. Okay. I did two sets. Oh, there's your thumbnail, producer E. Stand straight in front of me? Oh, never mind. What did you say? I said stand straight in front of me. Stand straight in front of you? closer to this side, even when I'm standing here, it's going to cast shadows. They're not much different. No, and it's probably just because like how, you know, you during work always having one. Like, oh yeah, for sure. I mean, years of operating equipment, one arm on the steering wheel, one arm on a set yeah. of controls, always looking over my shoulder. Imbalances. Imbalances. And a lot of your body pains are going to be from habitual practices, habitual behavior, and day-to-day -day life, um, daily shit, the way you drive, the way you sit. And yeah, a lot of us auto-regulate, so it's not the need to fear these kind of things. But in my situation, you know, when I'm operating a, a scraper pan for 10 or 12 hours a day, and I can only have one hand on the steering wheel because the controls are only on one side that I can operate them from. That's not something I can avoid. You know, that side of my neck is gonna get more stretched than the other. It's gonna put my rotator cuff in a bind. It's gonna cause a pelvic, not a pelvic tilt, a shoulder tilt and all that kind of stuff, which I've already been through, worked on, solved, got through it. I'm just, I'm just hooked on looking at this crazy ass fullness, this pump from four sets, two sets of chest, guys. Two sets of chest, two sets of shoulders. I mean, yeah, guys doing 20 set workouts to get a pump, you know, and like, oh yeah, look at this pump. Well, the fucking, what? Not even 20 reps total, you know, for the shoulders. Not even. Yeah, definition's not showing, it's good. I am a hairy son bitch. I have been lazy, I do not want to groom. About a half inch of hair all over the body, creating this nice, muddy, obscure. Oh. All right, that's enough. Bye.